All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of In the Shop with Custom Lowe's. Today, we're going to be working on a Ford F-150 underseat enclosure for four Kicker Audio l 7 8s This thing is right now just a pile of pieces, but stay tuned. We're going to quickly turn this thing into a, uh, a pretty cool subwoofer box. The pieces are already cut out. I got them in rough cuts basically right now, which means I don't have any angles on them. As you can see, all the pieces like these window braces right here, they're in square pieces. Our baffles have no angles on them in the back or the top pieces. Those all require angles, but you're going to see my process of getting these angles. If you guys order an underseat enclosure design, I have a lot of people asking how to get the angles. Unfortunately, in the design, for whatever reason, you can't find a way to accurately depict an angle. Plus, then I'd have to also depend on you guys having a tool to actually show you this angle. So what we're going to do in this process is we're going to start with the side pieces here, which I got right here. I'm going to show you guys how I... Uh, start off by cutting this at the slant that it needs to be in that piece right there where it's going to help us throughout the whole process as you can see in the design we have an enclosure right here it's for four kicker l7 8s it's going to be having three plexiglass windows one in the front and two in the sides as you can see not shown in the design but it will be getting a bare not a bare wood finish it has a bare wood finish in the design it's going to be getting a black bed liner finish on the inside outside we're going to be doing some rgb leds on the inside so it's going to be nice and bright it's going to be really colorful it's going to be a really awesome enclosure so figuring out the angle for the side piece is pretty straightforward what you're going to do is you're going to take your side piece again if you guys are getting an enclosure from me the designs are going to come with the side as a rough cut dimension this is what it will look like or something similar to this on this enclosure specifically we have a front height of 11 inches and a rear height of eight inches so we're gonna go on our board, mark our 11 inches in the front, mark our eight inches in the rear. For this example, I'm gonna use the square just to extend this line, mainly so you guys can see it in video. All right, so hopefully you guys can see these marks I got. This is our back line. This is gonna be our front line right here. Once you have those marked out, you're gonna take a straight edge, piece of scrap wood, straight piece of scrap wood, whatever you got. Um, you're gonna use those two lines you just made and you're gonna take the straight edge and line it straight across between the two lines. That's gonna be the angle of your side piece. So line them up, draw a line out, and there you have it is your side piece right there. Again, there's a couple different methods that are gonna be used for cutting it. Um, we're gonna go over a few now. So how you cut out your side is gonna greatly depend on what tools you have at access or what tools you can use circular saw jigsaw obviously you can just follow the line we just created and cut it out it's going to do just the it's going to do a good job um, for this purpose what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the same piece of scrap wood that i have and i'm going to bring it over the router table and i'm actually going to use my flush trim bit to cut that line then i'm going to take that piece and stack it on top of my next side piece which is still in rough cut dimension. And we're gonna staple that on or nail it on and uh, use the first piece as a template and route out this second piece. So I already have my line marked out. Again, I'm gonna be using my router. So I'm gonna take this piece, take my scrap piece that I use to make the line. Again, if you're gonna be doing this, you gotta make sure that whatever scrap you're using is a straight edge. I'm gonna line it up with that pencil mark I made. And then I'm just gonna use my brad nailer, which has some uh, one inch brad nails in there. I'm going to tack it on right there. This process, or doing it this way, will leave some uh, small holes inside your finished piece. If you want to avoid that, you could use template tape, but I like to cut down cost and avoid the template tape altogether. So here we are at the router table. I'm going to be using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. It's a white side bit. That's the brand if you guys are looking to buy one of these things. We're going to use the scrap piece, which I already nailed on here, as the guide for our router bearing. Our first piece is routed out again. We use that piece of scrap wood we nailed on there a second ago to use as a guide for our bearing. We are now going to use this piece as our template for our next side piece. So I got our piece. As you can see, it has a slant. This is going to be the front. This is going to be the back. We're going to put it on our side piece, lining up the sides, the front, the back, and the bottom. Then we're going to take the brad nailer, three nails in there just to make sure. Again, 
pressure kicks on. Again, you guys can use template tape if you want to avoid having any nails in your finished product. Back over here at the router, we're going to be using this piece again as a template. And in the same process, we use the scrap piece. We're going to be using the flush trim bit, the spiral flush trim bit, to uh, trim this excess off. <laughs> side piece is done I'm gonna be taking them apart with the pry bar very easy process again I'm using short brad nails so they're just barely holding it on so in my opinion the side pieces are really gonna be the key to the entire under seat build process so we cut our sides we have seen that process now we have this angled slope top piece now we're gonna use this on our table saw to get our angles if you guys have a circular saw I believe you can probably do the same thing just resting the piece on the um, bottom of the circular saw but on this process we're going to use a table saw so i'm going to be setting my front down on the bottom of my saw i'm going to raise my blade up uh, i'm going to raise it pretty high just so i can you know really accurately get the angle so i'm raising my blade up here and then i'm going to bring it right to the angle of this Piece here you guys can get a visualization of what's going on I'm using this angle here to use my angle on my table saw blade I'm gonna keep adjusting it till it lines up right with the angle that I have in my side piece be mindful that your teeth stick out a little bit farther than your blade so the teeth are a little bit thicker than the, the body of your saw blade so you're gonna have some space between the body of the blade and your workpiece but what you're trying to do is kind of even that up and make it even all the way across. So once you get your angle, you're just gonna lock it in there. Ah, I think I got it pretty good. It's all locked in there. So thankfully my saw is big enough to be able to move the fence on both sides. I know some of the smaller saws, you guys aren't gonna be able to do this, but you can kind of set up in a similar way. I know I've used the um, like rigid job site saw and I know that one even should be just big enough to do something like this so what i'm doing is i'm using this piece and i'm actually going to lock my fence in exactly with this piece i'm cutting my baffle first so the baffle is going to go from the full length of the bottom all the way to the top and it's going to be the piece that is like the face piece obviously the baffle <laughs> So we got the baffle cut and if I didn't already mention this side piece or your side pieces are basically your key to the whole enclosure. So we're going to use this side piece to check the baffle. It's cut perfectly. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to use that angle that we already have set on the table saw. We're going to cut the back piece, the top piece and our slot port pieces. So again, if you're working off an enclosure design that comes from me, I'm going to provide rough dimensions of all the pieces. What I like to do is I like to take a piece of my wood, you know, make sure it's a straight scrap piece. And I'm basically going to mark out on here with pencil where each piece goes. So we got the baffle, which is going to have two pieces. Again, your pencil line will add some thickness to your wood. So you got to account for that. In this process, we're really just trying to get the back piece is our most important piece in the process that i do i only need one angle on the top if you guys would like to follow along with how i build them you can just cut one angle on the top but for a normal enclosure you're not going to follow through with the final finish design i do you will have to cut an angle on both sides of your top piece so we got our baffle laid out next piece is our top which goes all the way from the baffle and runs all the way straight back off the back of the enclosure. Our bottom piece is a full piece as well. And again, remember, if you're using scrap wood, if you're like me, I have a whole bunch of different materials in the shop and uh, three quarter plywood is not always three quarter plywood. So make sure you're using something that is the same thickness as what you're building the enclosure out of. 
So now we got these pieces marked out. You're gonna end up with something that looks, looks similar to this here. So you can see we got our back piece and our top piece here. And I'm gonna use these markings or basically this drawing of the back piece to get my back piece cut. So here we have our side piece with our lines we just marked out. We got our back piece we're gonna put on there for comparison. Like I mentioned, if you guys are ordering a design for me, it's gonna come in rough dimensions, or even when I'm doing it for myself, I first cut everything in rough dimensions and do the angles afterwards. So as you can see by the pen pencil marks we already marked out, here and here, the piece of wood that we have for the back is about a half inch bigger. We're gonna use this drawing of the back. Now that I know my back piece is about a half inch, three eighths bigger, kind of gives me a rough idea where I'm going to start off with setting my fence. I'm going to lower my blade a little bit just for safety. Again, this is the same angle that we got originally using our side piece here. So I'm going to set my fence using this back piece as it is now. And I'd rather take off less and have to cut it multiple times. So I'm going to take off just a little bit. I definitely am. A, I definitely know that I'm cutting off less than is required, but I would rather take off multiple increments instead of trying to cut something perfectly the first time. And even if it ends up a, a 16th short or a 32nd, I'd rather have it as accurate as possible. All right, so now that we got the back piece cut, we got to do the top piece. Again, with the process that I like to do and just in the final detail, finished look of the enclosure, I only have to cut one angle on the top piece, which is going to be the angle that touches the baffle. I don't cut the back one only because I like to cut a large 45 in the back of the enclosure. You guys will see that further on into the process though. So for now, I'm basically just going to take off the, uh, the least amount of material I can from this in order to still get my angle in it. Again, I have the table still set at the same angle we set up earlier using the side piece. That's the same angle we cut the baffle and the back with. So the last two pieces we need to cut are going to be the walls for the slot ports. Now we're gonna be referencing the design for this and I'm gonna measure over from my inside of my back piece now i'm putting that on one inch that's called burning an inch um, the end of a tape measure has some slack and some play in it so if you want to be a little more accurate and especially on a situation like this when you're not necessarily hooking to the end of your board but you're trying to measure inside that i'm going to go to the one inch and i know my port needs to be one and a half so again you gotta make sure you add that inch back or deduct it i guess you could say so then we have one inch and a half inch and a half inch and a half then we're going to take the combo square mark a line straight up from there because our slot port is a straight up and down port oh, pretty straight line all right there we go now we're going to take our piece of scrap wood same material i use to mark out the thicknesses previously I'm gonna take that piece line it up with this line I just created and draw a pencil mark from the top down to the bottom and that's gonna be our piece right there and we're gonna do the same thing we did same practice we used to do the back we're gonna follow that along through the side piece to get that cut as well using the same angle that we already set up so like I mentioned before these pieces are all cut at rough sizes so even from our port walls my piece is slightly bigger than what is actually required i'm going to put it on the side piece that i have all my pencil markings on and kind of a diagram of all my pieces that are intersecting with it i'm going to lay that out on there just to get a rough idea of how much i have to cut off of there it's about the same as the back wall again i'd rather cut off less and take off more so i'm going to start off with a little bit Kind of where i know for a fact i'm going to be cutting it too big and i know that does kind of make doesn't make sense i'm doing extra work but this ensures that you get it near perfect and we do have two ports but for right now 
I'm only concerned with one port. Once I have the fence set perfectly, I won't have to move it again for the second port. So I can see that I got to take a little bit more off. We're going to go back to the saw, set it back up again, take a little bit more off this thing. We might go over this thing two, three, four times as long as it's good and it's actually a perfect fit. That's all we're concerned about. Test it again. Definitely getting closer. We're going to move it again. So here we have our side piece. And as you can see, if I'm lining it up with the bottom pencil line, we still have a little bit more to go. So we're going to keep cutting at it. Again, I'm just going in small increments. You can always cut more off. You can never add more back onto it unless you have a wood stretcher. line that up and that's looking good it's a little bit over the pencil lines but again like i mentioned previously the pencil lines will add a little thickness to it and you do have to account that account for that so i'm going to use a piece of scrap material that is the same material that i'm using i'm going to line it up on the top line it up on the bottom to double check it and actually that is perfect so we know the fence is set right we're going to go ahead and cut this second piece now So with our top cut, we basically have all the parts at their final sizes short of the window braces. We're gonna leave those till the later step. You're gonna see why. We're gonna start doing a little bit of assembly. We got our bottom piece and our back piece right here. I'm gonna start by assembling that together. All right, goes the other way. I'm gonna put a little wood glue on this thing and uh, use some brad nails to nail it up. And then we're gonna throw some clamps on it, let that dry. For this process, I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue. I normally use Tight Bond 2, but this was what I was able to get um, when Home Depot was closed, basically. I'm just spreading it across the piece here evenly. I used to just do the squirt method and kind of let the pressure between the two pieces touching, squeeze the glue out. But um, after reading a little, a few things, I feel like, um, Spraying it out evenly as possible will give you a much better glue joint. This box in particular is getting a bed liner finish inside and out, so we can be a little generous with the glue. If we do get a little squirt out, that's not really a big idea or big deal. If you were doing something that was getting stained, you might want to be cautious of that. All right, so I'm going to get this thing on here. Move it around a little bit, get that glue pressed out. We're gonna have to nail it kind of segment by segment. This piece did get a little bit warped on us, but we'll be able to fix that just by nailing, nailing it and gluing it up. So I'm gonna go through and put brad nails in. I am using inch and a half brad nails. Be cautious if you're using inch and a half when you go to nail two pieces together, such as the baffle, they will blow out the other side. For something like that, I would use inch and a quarter brad nails. Probably going about every six inches, maybe a little closer than that. Really just eyeballing it mostly. And again, this back piece did get a little warped, so kind of working it as I go down, straightening it out. Just a little bit of pressure is really all you need to get it working. So I'm going to clamp this up as well. That's just going to help make sure we have a nice solid glue joint. I'm going to go with four clamps. You can go more obviously if you wanted. I personally probably wouldn't go any less than that just because of the length of this box. And then you also have to pay, be a little careful with the, um, the fact that you're running an angle on the top there because the clamp will kind of deform it if you're not watching out for it.
All right, tighten that thing down. Get this last one on here. And once we get this clamped up, we're gonna start moving over to the baffle. Give this time to dry. I'm gonna run a bead of glue right between the two joints, kind of like you would do with caulking. I like to use wood glue. Put a bead of glue in there, all the way across between the joint of the two pieces, and then just as you would with caulking, spread it out with your finger. If this stuff dries pretty clear, even the normal type on two dries pretty clear, um, and it'll ensure that you have a nice tight seal. So the next hurdle jump in this project is going to be cutting the sub holes out in the baffle. Unlike most normal subs, the L7s have a square cutout in them. We're not going to be able to use a circle jig on this part. We are going to be creating a template. I don't have one yet, so we're also going to be showing you guys the process of creating a template. And you can also follow this process for any L7 um, size they have, or really even follow this process if you need to create a template of any other shape. So first thing I'm going to be doing is creating a 12 by 12 blank. Now this is going to be the base for my template. I'm making out of three quarter inch plywood. I would have possibly preferred some half inch MDF, but I don't have any in the shop right now. My saw is already set. Good to go. Get the saw on. Now that we got our 12 by 12 square, we're going to start laying out our template or shape that we need to cut out. I'm going to start by marking this thing center. So I'm going to go six, six, marking the centers out. I'm going to take my combo square and mark the center points on both sides going straight across. That will also get us a dead center of the template as well. So we got that. Now we have this thing kind of quartered off in four sections. We're going to be basically using the centering point to make sure our template sits center within this 12 by 12 square. We do need a seven and a quarter cutout, so we're going to center seven and a quarter on this centering point itself. So we got our center point drawn out on this piece. Next thing we have to do is split seven and a quarter and a half. And my quick math, seven is three and a half. A quarter inch is going to be one eighth. So we know we need to make this three and five eighths. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna, well, we'll burn seven inches even. One, two, three, and five eighths. Same way, this way, one, two, three, and five eighths. And the reason I'm not using the tongue of the tape measure again is because it does have a little play. When you're trying to get to do stuff like this, it becomes a little inaccurate. Also, this does have quite a large tongue on it as well, so that's another kind of downside to this exact tape measure. So we got those marked out. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. Just line it up with whatever inch you can that has your tongue hanging off the side. One, two, three, and five eighths. One, two, three, and five eighths. Okay, so those are two marks. Now we're gonna take our combo square and do straight lines across. And we won't need to go all the way on really any of these lines because again, we're centering a seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter square on a 12 by 12 piece. I gotta go this way. All right, so there's our seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter square. So according to the Kicker website, the L78 has a one and a half inch radius corner. Conveniently, a sealed roll of black tape equals three inches. Half of that, which would be the radius, is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna use the piece of, or the roll of black tape as my corner template. All right, so there is our square with all of our rounded corners as well. Again, it calls for a one and a half inch radius, so three inch circle. 
in the corner should give us the one and a half inch radius. So using my drill bit, I'm gonna drill out a, uh, a starting hole kind of close to the sidewall of my cutout. Not too close because I do want to cut in. And then I'm going to use my jigsaw to finish the cutout up. Uh, obviously, I'm going around and I'm using this as a template. You want this to be as close to perfect as you can. So if you're a little bit shaky on the, on the jigsaw, maybe you want to do a few test cuts first. So we got our piece cut out with the jigsaw. There are some uh, minor imperfections just based off the fact that you're cutting it by hand that you will have to fix up. I'm gonna be using some 80 grit on a, um, like a medium density foam, hard foam sanding block. So now that we have this piece sanded up and I got it about as close as I'm going to get it with sanding, I'm now going to take my flush trim bit. This trick will work if you guys do have access to the router table. If not, feel confidently if you did a good enough job with your jigsaw and you sanded it good, you'd be good to go. I'm going to use my spiral flush trim bit though. I'm going to set it where it's not going to cut through the wood but the bearing is going to be riding on the top edge of the wood now what this will do is this is going to flatten out all the inside of my cutout here the jigsaw no matter skill level does have a tendency to uh, wave a little bit as it's cutting through the wood especially with the changing of the pressure as you cut through it so what i'm going to do is use my router to flush trim around it it's not going to take off much only thing it's really going to take off is any high spots on the bottom that uh, the jigsaw had any waves on or any high spots on the other side because I'm going to flip it both ways. Alright, now we have a pretty close to perfect template cutout for our kicker l 7 Figuring out where exactly we're going to be placing our template at. I already have this thing pre-designed, so I'm gonna be using some measurements I already have pulled up on here. And uh, basically, since we already have the template, we're gonna need the starting point of the side and the starting point of the bottom. So now that we have the subs marked out on there, we basically marked out using our template on the baffle with pencil. We're gonna take the drill bit, give us some starting holes, and we're gonna rough cut these out with the jigsaw. And we're really just rough cutting this out with the jigsaw because this is an inch and a half and you wanna kind of take away some of the work from your router bit. It's gonna save your router bit, it's gonna save you a router really.
All right, well, we did get the baffle cut. I did miss a few clips just because honestly, I had some complications and hopefully these complications kind of lead to a little learning lesson for you guys. Um, being that this was a double stacked baffle, double baffle, inch and a half of plywood, two, three quarters, however you want to say it. Um, cutting through with the jigsaw was not very easy. I did have some like really rough cut bits and uh, I even tried switching out to a brand new bit, changing different settings on my on my uh, jigsaw. My blade was getting a lot of bend in it. Um, and in fact, on the first one, it, it cut it so crookedly that I actually almost had to scrap the whole baffle. So one thing you should definitely watch out for when using the jigsaw is the fact that your blade will bend and twist as you cut through. And uh, it kind of tends to do it more and more on thicker material versus uh, thinner material. Also on bends around like the subs here, you're gonna have that issue as well sometimes where you're pushing so hard on the blade, it's actually going to force it to start curving um, with the cut. So thankfully I was able to save it. I did miss a few steps. As you guys seen, my solution for it was kind of ditch the jigsaw altogether. Well, not altogether. I uh, took my circular saw, plunge cut it in there. Since the sub holes for the L7s are more of a square shape, I was able to make this work. I uh, basically plunge cut my circular saw in there as far as I could go without going past, obviously, the lines that I drew on there for the sub cutout. And then I took my jigsaw and just finished that off from there. It gave me a lot less jigsaw material or material to jigsaw, I guess you could say, and definitely helped out a lot. Definitely uh, had even some challenges on the router as well. I had a two inch cutting depth, uh, one inch double flute flush cut bit and it's a top bearing mount and for whatever reason it's just dull i had to order in a new one actually so you'll see i'm using a different bit on the router table over there it's actually a brand new bit i don't really want to give too much advice on that bit because it's the first time i've ever used it it did seem to cut very well so i am happy hopefully maybe by the end of this video i'll have a uh, a different recommendation for you guys on that but the baffle is cut thankfully we we're done with that step so let's uh let's keep moving on we got a couple more things to do on this thing. We got a flush mount on here for the subs and we also got a window in the front. I think the first thing we're gonna do is create our template for the window that's gonna go in the middle. Be sure to catch part two to see us finish off this enclosure. Tons more tips and tricks to come, including making custom templates and shapes, flush mounting woofer holes that don't have a flush mount already, bed lining subwoofer enclosures, wiring in LEDs, mounting plexiglass windows and much much more so don't miss it stay tuned for part two if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to this channel like this video and drop us a comment below and if you've made it this far make sure you comment 1728 down below so i know who my dedicated viewers are who is actually watching to the very end of this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on part two